हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसेज एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई आई टी गुवाहाटी एंड वॉट वी वर डिस्कसिंग इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर इज अबाउट द ग्रोथ एज वेल एज द प्रोपोकेशन ऑफ द बोकरियाटिक सेल एज वेल एज द यू कैरियाटिक सेल्स सो इन दैस लेक्चर वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मीडिया एंड एज वेल एज द मीडिया कंपोनेंट वट यू रिक्वायर टू सक्सेसफुली ग्रो एज वेल एज द मैनीपुलेट दी सेल्स सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फ्रैक्शनेशन ऑफ दी सेल्स सो वट वी हैव डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर इज दैट वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट the different types of uh, cells so uh, we have discussed about the prokaryotic cell we have discussed about the yeast and fungi uh, which are actually within the eukaryotic cell as well as we discussed about the plant cell as well as the animal cells so when you have the different types of cells these cells are actually are very very complex structures and you might be sometime interested to explore a particular molecule or particular substance from a particular uh, location of that particular uh, cell for example in some cases you might be interested to see uh, the molecules which are present on to the uh, plasma membrane of a prokaryotic cell or you are looking for a molecule which is present within the cytosol of a prokaryotic cell uh, the situation is even more and more complicated when we talk about the animal cell as well as the plant cell because compared to the prokaryotic cell which actually has a single cell uh, uh, body where you don't have the multiple organelles except a plasma membrane and the cytosol Uh, apart from that you have also have the periplasmic fractions but uh, besides a very simple structure uh, the eukaryotic cell actually offers many more complications for example you have the nucleus you have the different types of organelles like endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria lysosomes golgi bodies and all other kind of organelles uh, the uh, and in addition to that when we talk about the plant cells the plants are also contains the cell wall as well as the plasma membrane and all other kinds of organelles like chloroplast nucleus and uh, so so when you are looking for the isolation of a particular factor from the a particular uh, region of a cell whether it is belonging to a mitochondria or chloroplast or endoplasmic reticulum or lysosomes the things becomes more and more complicated so in today's lecture we are going to discuss about how to fractionate the prokaryotic cell as well as a uh, eukaryotic cell to isolate the uh, pr uh, protein of your interest from a particular uh, cell organelles or a part of the cell so we'll start with the prokaryotic cell so in the prokaryotic cell you have uh, so this is a typical uh, bacterial cell where you have the plasma membrane and outside the plasma membrane you have a cell wall and this is a flagella which actually allows the movement of a typical prokaryotic cell and within the cell wall what you have is you have the two layer one is the outer layer and then you have the inner layer and in between the outer layer as well as the inner layer you have a space which is called as the periplasmic space so what you see here is the the uh, the uh, distribution of the different types of proteins what is present within the bacterial cell so what you see is that in the periplasmic fractions you have the 129 different types of proteins where some proteins are of high molecular weight and some proteins are of low molecular weight similarly you have the outer membrane where you have the 15 50 different types of proteins uh, nine proteins are also only belonging to a high molecular weight protein then some of the proteins are extracellular in nature which means they will be going to be secreted from the bacteria and they will be present in the uh, into the uh, into the media of that particular um, uh, culture then you have the inner membrane and as well as the cytoplasm so the major chunk of the protein are always been present within the cytoplasm and you have the two region which are of your interest to isolate the protein one is the periplasmic fractions and the second is the cytoplasmic fractions so so first we are going to discuss about the periplasmic fractions and remember the periplasmic fraction means the fraction which is present within the Uh, within the outer layer as well as the inner layer so the region which is present between the outer layer and inner layer is called as the periplasmic region and that region is always been used by the bacteria to store 
the uh, proteins for or sometime the, they also use that protein into that periplasmic fractions. Uh, sometime they also use the proteins to again uh, sequester the drugs and related complexes. And periplasmic fraction is very important uh, even in uh, suppose you would like to use the bacteria for overexpression purposes because the periplasmic fraction is giving a suitable environment for the proper folding of the protein. So, in some cases what happen is that you are actually uh, putting a signaling sequence or you are putting a localization sequence into your protein of your interest and as a result the protein is getting into the periplasmic fraction. So, let us see how you can be able to isolate the periplasmic fraction from the bacteria. So, the periplasmic fraction first you have to harvest the bacterial cell by the centrifugation at the uh, 3000 G for 20 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. So, remember the periplasmic fraction isolation is a uh, very very sensitive for the proteins that is why the most of these procedure has to be performed at 4 degree because the uh, once you isolate the bacteria and when you are going to break open and you would like to isolate the periplasmic fractions, the all the proteases and all other kinds of protein degrading machinery is going to be activated in that process. That is why the whole procedure has to be performed on 4 degree. So, in the first step you are going to harvest the bacterial cell by centrifugation at 3000 G for 20 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. Once you have uh, uh, got the bacterial pellet, then you are going to discard the media and then you are going to carefully remove the last drop of liquid so that you will not going to uh, suck up the uh, bacterial cells. Then the bacterial pellet you are gently suspend in 1 ml of TSE buffer using a wire loop and then you incubate this mixture at uh, on ice for 30 minutes. So, in these particular incubations what will happen is that the bacteria is going to uh, swell and it is actually going to give you the, uh, the periplasmic fractions. Then what you have to do is you have to transfer the cells in the micro centrifuge and centrifuge at the 16000 G which is the maximum speed in the microfuge for 30 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. Then you transfer the supernatant to a new centrifuge tube this supernatant constitute the envelope extract as well as the periplasmic fractions. So, the, in this particular protocol what we have done actually is we have actually given a heat shock or uh, we have given the osmotic shock to the bacterial cell after removal of the cell wall and in that process the periplasmic fraction is being uh, removed from the bacteria or, we, or the protein what is present in the periplasmic fractions are being extracted. So, what you see is that first you have harvested the cells, then you have this, then you have incubated the cell in a in a in a in a TSE buffer, and that actually is good enough to give them a shock. And then uh, you are actually uh, centrifuging that so that the supernatant will going to contain the periplasmic fractions, and the pellet is going to contain the other part of the cell. Uh, apart from that you can also do the isolation of the cytosolic fractions. So, there is no, uh, uh, there is no uh, special uh, uh, way of doing uh, of isolating the cytoplasmic fractions. What you have to do is you have to take the bacterial cells and then you since the bacterial cell does not contain the organelles the isolation of the cytosolic fraction is very easy because what you have to do is you have to take the bacterial cells then you have the multiple options like through which you can actually break the cells. So, you have to first break the cells with the help of the different types of the uh, cell disruption methods. So, there are mechanical methods, there are non the enzymatic methods and there are the physical methods. For example, you can use the thermolysine, you can take the osmotic fragility, you can take the uh, help, you can take the help of the detergents. Uh, in case you are, you are looking for only to prepare the cell lysate, you are not interested to isolate the active protein, but if you are interested to isolate the active protein, you can even use the mechanical methods like you can use the uh, homogenizations, you can use the uh, other kinds of mechanical methods. And as a result, what will happen is it is actually going to give you uh, uh, the cell mixture like where it is actually going to contain the broken cells and 
plus the supernatant and then what you have to do is you have to centrifuge this mixture at the 16000 G for 20 minutes and as a result you are going to get two fractions you are going to get the pellet fractions you are going to get the supernatant fractions this pellet fraction is only going to contain the broken cells and uh, that you can actually uh, discard because this broken cells as well as these are actually going to have the cell wall and all those other kinds of material whereas in the supernatant you are actually going to have the cytosolic fractions. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the way you can actually be able to fractionate the bacterial cells either you can isolate the periplasmic fraction or you can isolate the, uh, the cytosolic fractions. Now compared to the, uh, the prokaryotic cell which are actually very simple and where there is no the uh, where there you do not have the multiple organelles the isolation of the proteins from the different organelles or even within the present cytosol is very very complicated uh, when you when you talk about the eukaryotic cell for example you are talking about the animal cell or to the plant cells. So, in the case of plant cell you are going to have the problem of cell wall which is actually going to be broken down then only you can be able to uh, access the uh, plasma membrane you can be able to access the organelles whereas in the case of animal cell which is actually going to be very very sensitive for any kind of treatment you have to be very very careful about the osmotic fragility and you can you always have to very about uh, very uh, sensitive about the, the there should be no change in the osmolarity of the solutions because as soon as you change the osmolarity of a solution and the mammalian cells are present that itself is going to break the cells they might have they might also disturb the overall distribution of the protein within the organelle as well and as a result you are not going to get the uh, good recovery of your protein from a certain organelles. For example, if you are interested to isolate a the protein from the mitochondrial fractions, but by mistake if you if you add the some amount of water, okay. So what will what the what will happen is the water is going to break the plasma membrane, which is going to be the first barrier, and then it is actually going to destroy the mitochondrial membrane as well and ultimately what you what will happen is that the recovery of your particular protein is going to be very very less. So that is why we have to be very careful when we are handling the eukaryotic proteins because they are very sensitive for different types of treatment what you are going to perform uh, in during the course of uh, different types of experiments or when you are actually going to isolate the different proteins from the different locations of the cell. So, within the eukaryotic cell you have majorly you have the multiple options like you have the locations like plasma membrane, you have the mitochondria, you have the chloroplast, you have the cytosol and apart from that you also in the case of uh, the uh, in the case of plants you might have the chloroplast and you might have the cell wall as well. So, how to how to fractionate this because uh, sort of to understand the fractionation first you have to understand the uh, the underlining the instruments and as well as the principle and then we were going to discuss about the fractionation of the different uh, uh, different uh, fractionation of the eukaryotic cell and how you can be able to isolate the different organelles and even how you can be able to un, uh, isolate the protein from those organelles. So, for the fractionations you might have to require the different types of centrifuges. So, this is the microfuge which is actually a very low speed uh, centrifuge. Then you have the high volume high, high speed centrifuge it actually can also go uh, to the 4 degree as well as can be 37 degree Celsius and then this is the high speed uh, uh, high speed centrifuge. Uh, this is the centrifuge what you use for cell culture purposes because it also can have the uh, flexibility of putting the different types of rotors like you can have the fixed angle rotors or you can have the plate rotors 
and this is the centrifuge what you have is called as the ultra centrifuge because it actually can go up to the ultra high speed centrifuge uh, speeds and it actually can go even up to the 1 lakh g actually so that actually is required to isolate the different components of a cell this is a typical rotor what you use in a ultra centrifuge when you are using and these are these centrifuge these uh, rotors are actually being made with a very very strong metal so that when you they are rotating at a very very high speed it actually withstand that kind of high pressure uh, as far as the centrifugation is concerned the centrifugation can be done in two ways either you can do a differential centrifugations or to the density gradient centrifugations the basic principle or the underlining principle of the centrifugation remains the same and i think you remember when we were talking about the uh, the maintenance as well as the operation of the centrifuge we have discussed about the basic principle so the basic principle is that when you are rotating a object around the axis it actually experiences the two forces the centripetal forces which is actually towards the axis and the centrifugal forces which is actually away from the axis so if you are actually rotating a object and uh, around an axis so what will happen is you are going to have a, uh, the centrifugal centrif centripetal force towards the center of this uh, uh, towards the towards the center of the axis whereas you are going to experience the uh, centrifugal force which is away from the axis so you can imagine that if you keep this object into a uh, up and off or into a tube this object will try to move towards this side but this uh, this but this object is present in a in a liquid so this liquid is actually going to oppose the movement of this object so what will happen is when the object is trying to move towards the uh, towards the away from the center because of the centrifugal force which is actually going to be f f3 it is actually going to be opposed by two forces one is called as the buoyance forces so that you can imagine that fb and then you also can have the frictional forces because when the moment when the molecule is moving to through the uh, through the uh, through the viscous material it actually going to experience two things one is the buoyancy because of the density of the molecule and the other one is the friction because the molecule has some size so f3 is actually going to equal or bigger than uh, in both the cases so f3 can be uh, f3 can be equal to uh, in the case of fb plus ff uh, when you are talking about the density gradient centrifugations f3 is going to be bigger to the fb plus the ff because in that case what will happen is the f3 is going to push this uh, object uh, towards the center or towards the end of this tube and ultimately what will happen is that because the tube is closed from the lower end the object will go and form the pellet so it actually going it will if it is traveling and in traveling and it is traveling because the opposition or uh, because the opposing forces are very very uh, less then what will happen is this object will reach to the uh, end of this tube and it is actually going to be pelleted down so this is the basic principle of the centrifugations as far as the density gradient uh, the differential centrifugation is concerned as well as the density gradient centrifugation is concerned both of these uh, centrifugations are actually uh, utilizing the centrifugal forces as well as they are exploiting the size as well as the density of the particular material so that's why the uh, the sedimentation of a particular object is depends on to the different size shape and the density so you can imagine that if you have a molecules of different sizes as well as the densities and if you start doing the centrifugations what will happen is that the molecules which are of large size which means of a high molecular weight are going to be pelleted down first then the, you are going to have the medium size objects and then you are going to have the small size object and on the top you are going to have the solvent which means the 
differential centrifugation is actually exploiting the two phenomena. One is the size of the object and the second is the density of that particular object because these are the two parameter which are actually going to decide at what uh, centrifugation speed they are actually going to overcome the beyond forces as well as the frictional forces of uh, frictional forces so that they will be get pelleted down. So, you can understand that with the simple uh, thing that suppose we have the different types of objects for example, you have an iron which is of 100 kg, you can have the stone which is of 30 kg, you can have the another iron block which is of 10 kg and you can have the stone which is of 10 kg and then at the end you also have the cotton which is of 8 kg and you have another block of iron which is 1 kg. So, you remember you know that the iron is the highest density uh, and the so this is iron right. So, iron is actually having the highest density whereas the stone is going to have the uh, the middle uh, density and the, and the cotton is going to have the least density. So, when you are actually going to take this mixture and you are going to spin what will happen is that irrespective of their uh, their um, their weight means in irrespective of whether they are 100 kg, 10 kg or 1 kg, the iron is going to be pelleted down at the bottom. So, it is actually going to be the heaviest particle and then the stone is going to be uh, pelleted down later on and the uh, cotton is going to be remain at the top. So, which means if you do a differential certification, what will happen is that the iron is going to be pelleted down first or the iron is going to be pelleted down at a very very low speed because it is actually going to help the centrifugal forces and actually the it is going to uh, so even if you spin at a very slow speed the centrifugal force of the iron because of the density is going to be so heavy that it is actually be good enough to uh, to nullify the effect of the buoyant forces as well as the frictional forces. Whereas, th at that particular time the stone as well as the cotton it will not be getting pelleted down, but when you increase the lit speed little high then the stone is going to be pelleted down, but the cotton will still remain within the uh, liquid. Okay? And then if you increase the uh, speed further up because the cotton is going to have the least density it requires more force and more speed because then only the centrifugal force is going to be good enough so that it will be get pelleted down because the centrifugal force at the end the centrifugal force has to dis has to nullify the effect of the frictional forces as well as the beyond forces and that is how that is how actually you can be able to uh, the pellet down the uh, particles of the different densities. Let us see in the biological world what are the what is the situation. So, in, this is a kite this is a uh, uh, graph what is what is being shown and this is the densities. So, what you see is the sedimentation rate or the sedimentation coefficients of the different molecules and what you see is that the the the, uh, the proteins which are actually having the very high molecular weight is actually having the uh, least sedimentation rate whereas the molecules which are of as as you go from this side to this side the sedimentation rate is getting down and uh, and that happening because the uh, and when the sedimentation rate will go down which means you have to run the these molecules at a very high speed similarly what you can see here is the uh, the it is showing as the sedimentation rate of the protein DNA as well as the other biomolecules. And so, in this graph what we are trying to show is that as the density of a molecule will go up you are actually going to have the higher sedimentation rate uh, and that is how you might you do not have to run the centrifuge at a very high speed which means because the molecule itself has a tendency to sediment sediment its own that is why you do not have to spin at a very high speed. For example, the mitochondria is actually going to be pelleted down at a speed of 15,000 g whereas, the protein which is present in the soluble fraction 
is actually going to be piloted down at a speed of 1,30,000 g which means or any any speed which is less than more than 1 lakh g uh, so uh, which means and I, as you can see the sedimentation rate or sedimentation coefficient of the soluble protein is on a lower side whereas the sedimentation coefficient of the mitochondria as well as the nucleus is on a higher side which means these molecules are does not require a high speed to be get sedimented in. So let us discuss about the isolation of the cell organelles. So I have taken a two examples. In the first example, we are trying to process the liver cells. So in the liver cell, what will happen is that uh, uh, you have to, if you would like to set and isolate the cells and then if you would like be interested to isolate the uh, cell organelles, what you have to do is that first you have to do a process called the perfusion. So perfusion is a process which actually removes the blood from the liver because you know that the liver is a uh, vascularized organ. So liver is uh, having the full supply of blood and because of that when you are trying to isolate the, the liver cells, uh, they, you are also going to have the contamination of the blood cells because the blood is present in the liver. So that liver uh, can be perfused with a uh, with the isotonic uh, solutions like you can use the saline or the phosphate buffer saline and that actually is going to remove the blood what is present inside the liver and that actually is going to remove the contaminating cells. Otherwise, when you are trying to isolate an organelle, for example, if you are interested to isolate the mitochondria of the from the hepatocytes which are basically making the liver cells, you can be able to, you will not be able to isolate the uh, mitochondria only from the liver cell because the mitochondria will also going to be contribute from the kuffer cells and the other kinds of immune cells what is present in the blood. So first you have in the first step you remove the blood from the uh, liver in, with, in, a, in a process called perfusion and then what you have to do is you dissect this liver into small pieces and you homogenize in a buffer which is isotonic either you can use the PBS which means like phosphate buffer saline or you can use a saline simple saline like uh, so both are going to be isotonic and then you do the homogenization so homogenization you can do in a homogenizer homogenizer is a is a kind of a uh, mechanical uh, cell disruptor so where what will happen is that when you do a homogenizer uh, homogenization the this particular type of uh, uh, Teflon uh, blade is actually going to rotate into this particular chamber. So homogenization is like simple. Uh, if you under, if you uh, if you might not have seen the homogenizers, it is sim just like a as you are using the mixer grinders in your home actually. So mixer grinders are nothing but it is having a blade which rotates, and because it cuts, it is rotating uh, the blade. Uh, it actually cuts the cells, it, it cuts the tissue into a small particles and that is how it is actually going to break the cells. So once you do the homogenization, you are actually going to get the whole cell, you are going to get the whole cell or the cellular particles which means you are going to have the different types of organelles what is present. So homogenization is never going to break the cell it is into such a way that the individual organelles are also going to be broken down because the uh, the homogenization is going to be done in the isotonic condition if you do homogenization under the hypotonic condition then only it is actually going to disrupt the or uh, cell organelles as well so then what you have is you have a mixture of the broken cells you are going to have a mixture of different types of organelles like you can you going to have the mitochondria, you are going to have the chloroplast, uh, you are going to have the mitochondria, you are going to have the nucleus, you are going to have the lysosomes, you are going to have the endoplasmic reticulums, the Golgi bodies and all that. Then what you have to do is the first step what you have to do is you since we are using the differential centrifugations, you first spin the this mixture at 600 G for 10 minutes and what will happen is when you do that it is actually going to pellet the most heavy particles 
So, it is actually going to uh, remove the nucleus from the mixture and now what you have is you are actually going to have the remaining stuff like you are going to have the mitochondria, you are going to have the lysosomes, you are going to have the peroxisomes and now what you do is you spin this again at 15000 G for 15 minutes and remember whole this procedure has to be done at 4 degree as we discussed before also that whole cell fractionation process is very very sensitive for the proteases as well as other cell lytic enzymes. So, that is why it is important that you perform all this procedure at a low temperatures. So, now what you have you have a mixture of this and then what you, if you spin at 15000 G for 15 minutes it is actually going to pellet all the other heavy particles like mitochondria, lysosomes, peroxisomes and so on. Now what you have you so you take out the supernatant into the next tube and then again you are going to spin. So now what you are doing is you are spinning at the 1 lakh G uh, for 60 minutes and in that process what will happen is that the plasma membrane as well as the ER as well as the small vesicles are going to be pelleted down whereas the ribosomes and the viruses or the macromolecules are going to be remain in the supernatant they are not going to be get pelleted down. Now what you have to do is you take this supernatant again and you spin it at 3 lakh G for 2 hours and that is actually going to pellet the ribosomal fractions, you are going to get the virus particles as well as you are going to get the macromolecules. Now after this whatever the supernatant you are going to get is actually going to be the cytosol which actually going to contain the monomeric proteins and that is actually going to contain all the, so it is actually going to contain the cytosol which is actually nothing but a protein solutions. So, this is what the differential certification can be used to fractionate the different types of organelles starting from the liver. Now, you can do the same thing from the muscle cell as well. So, in the case of muscle cell because the muscle cells are not very vascularized, you do not need to do a perfusion step to remove the blood cells. What you can do is you can first step itself you can do the homogenizations uh, for 10 minutes at 1000 G. So, after the homogenization you are going to get a cell mixture where you are going to have the broken cells, nuclear, mitochondria and chloroplast and everything all the cell organelles. Then what you do is you spin at 10, 1000 G for 10 minutes and that is actually going to remove the nucleus as well as the cell debris and then you got the supernatant you spin at 10,000 G for 10 minutes and that is actually going to remove the mitochondria and all other kind of thing and then uh, you take the supernatant and spin it at 20,000 G that is actually going to remove the mitochondria. Then you take the supernatant and uh, spin it again for 1 lakh G for 60 minutes and that is actually going to give you the microsomes or the endoplasmic reticulum fractions and the plasma membranes and then you are going to get the cytosol and if you are more interested to even uh, isolate the plasma membrane further then what you can do is you can do a density gradient certification of this fractions and that actually is going to give you the, uh, the pure fractions of the different microsomal fractions. Uh, so, repeated centrifugations at progressively high speed with fraction to fractionate the homogenate of cell into the into the individual components. In general, the smaller the subcellular components, in smaller the subcellular component, the greater is the centrifugal force required to sediment it. So, this is the basic principle where the smaller the object, the lesser the density it is actually required the higher centri centrifugal force and higher centrifugal force means you have to run the molecule run the centrifuge at a high speed. Then we are talking about the density gradient centrifugation. So, you can see the densities of the different biological molecules like the micro microbial cells which goes from into 1.05 to 115. Then you have the mammalian cells which is actually in this range, then you have the different types of organelles which goes from 1.1 to 1.6, then you have the proteins which goes into 1.3, 1 
DNA and RNA. So, the density gradient centrifugation actually uh, 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 exploits the uh, physical property of a molecule that where the centrifugal force is equal to the beyond forces and the frictional forces. So, what you have seen in the differential centrifugation that we are actually increasing the centrifugal force and that is how you are actually uh, you know you are nullifying the uh, beyond forces as well as the frictional forces. Whereas, in this case you are simply doing the reverse which means you are keeping the centrifugal force constant and in and in the and in now you are what you are doing is you are actually increasing the beyond forces as well as the frictional forces especially the beyond forces and that is how you what will happen is the molecule which can be piloted down uh, in the absence of the beyond forces uh, it is now actually not going to be piloted down because you are increasing the beyond forces and as a result the molecule is going to be remain in the uh, supernatant and it is going to be localized in a particular region. So, what you are going to do in the in density gradient centrifugation is that suppose I have used a sucrose density gradient centrifugations and then I have loaded the molecules of the different densities onto this. So, at the beginning all the molecules are mixed and you have a mixture. Then what will happen is when you run this for 30 minutes what you will what will happen is that since all these molecules are having the differential sedimentation rate because they are actually associated with the differential uh, 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 differential centrifugal forces. So, what will happen is that centrifugal force is actually going to uh, with uh, going to oppose by the beyond forces as well as the frictional forces. So, if I increase the beyond forces or if you manipulate the beyond forces what will happen is that the molecules are going to be localized in different zone within that particular supernatant instead of getting pelleted down because what you are doing is you are actually manipulating with the beyond forces and at a place where they are actually going to stop which means at this point for these blue color pellets what will happen is that the centrifugal force for these molecules are actually equivalent or the equal to the beyond forces to the frictional forces. So, as a result it is actually going to be localized to this. Uh, similarly, is this is the location for this. So, at this particular location the forces are now been equalized and what will happen is if you keep doing this the molecule will localize to a particular region and that is how they are actually going to be separated which means the molecules are actually going to utilize their densities to generate a particular type of centrifugal force and that centrifugal force is actually going to be opposed by the beyond forces plus the frictional forces. But at a particular point the frictional forces plus beyond forces are going to be equalized by the centrifugal forces and that is the place where the molecule is going to remain there. It will not going to be piloted down because if you go further up and if you increase the centrifugal force further then the molecule is going to be piloted down and it will remain at the bottom of that uh, bottom of that particular tube. So, in so, the, so compared to the sedimentation uh, compared to the differential centrifugations the density gradient centrifugation actually exploits the diff the uh, densities of the molecule as well as the densities of that particular uh, uh, the medium as well. So, these are the fractionation that, that is the way you are going, uh, going to do the fractionation which means uh, when you are going to start. So, th the molecules are going to be localized and then uh, they you can be able so if you want you can actually break open these uh, tubes and you can be able to collect all the individual fractions. Uh, how to collect the uh, fractions when you are going to do the density gradient certification. So, you can imagine that I have a crude mixture when I run it for the 3 hours at 1,50,000 g what will happen is it has formed the different types of bands like the band which are actually been uh, corresponding to the heavy, uh, heavy fractions, light fractions. Uh, triads and as well as the surface membrane. Then what will happen is if I have to remove these what I can do is I have the two options either I can just use the 
pipettes and I can just suck it. So, I can put a pipette to next to the this particular fraction and I can just suck this whole liquid and that is actually going to remove. Uh, automatic fraction collector for unstable gradients and the second third case is you can do the freezing and slicing. So, what happen is in the freezing and slicing what you do is suppose this is the fractions you have the different types of fractions. So, what you do is you freeze this and then you actually going to cut all these into small slices and then individual slice you can remove and thaw and that actually is going to give you that individual uh, fractions. So, so, this is all about the cell fractionations and how you can be able to exploit the different types of centrifugations. Either you use the differential centrifugations or the density gradient centrifugations to, to isolate the different types of organelles from the eukaryotic cells. We have also discussed about the prokaryotic cell and how you can be able to fractionate the prokaryotic cells to isolate the periplasmic fraction as well as the cytoplasmic fractions. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you. <music>